Hey React enthusiast, welcome back to BitSight. Today, we are embarking on a fascinating journey in the heart of React component lifecycle methods. Ever wonder how React manages the lifecycle of its component? Well, you are in the right place. We will keep things simple and fun. So, strap in and let's explore React component lifecycle methods together. Whether you are new to React or looking to refresh your knowledge, this video is for you. So let's get started. Namaste. Welcome to Bit Science. Unlock the secrets of life and technology with our comprehensive biology and Cambridge Science education. So today's session, we are going to learn React Component Life Cycle. In React Component, visually there are three main phases when we talk about life cycle of React. This is very much important in terms of interview or in terms of understanding the React system. Three phases are mounting, updating, and mounting. So by name you can understand mounting is when, when the render is happening, right? Along with that, those are mounting. And updating is when some state changes or the props changes or you, some user fired some event and the event is captured and some sim changes of some DOM modification happens. So that is around the mod updating. Unmounting is the destroying of the every component. So whatever you have made, you want to destroy the component. So you want to disappear something. So some of the component. That point this unmounting happens. For that in React there are many inbuilt methods that you can use it. It is not necessary to use it every time but if required, you can use this to enhance your component. So what are these? Let's see. So see this diagram. It represents all your methods in one in shot. So we have mounting phase, we have updating phase, we have unmounting phase. So first, the fun most, you have a constructor in a React component. So you are, this is only for React component, not the functional component. All This is also optional, if React can be stateless and stateful. So when you have talking about stateful component, so this whole phase, it also take care of your props, all the parent data and restore and bind to your props value. Then immediately after constructor, there's a new method called get derived state send traps. This is called when, when the state and props are, you want to get the data. So that point, if you want to initiate just after constructor, you can call this method and that you can update your props or state value. From second phase, we have a method called should component update. This should component update, it only returns true and false value. This only talks about if that component has some update or not. Just after that, there is a render method. If render or any state has been changed, so this will capture, this will checks that the render has, has update or not. So if that it is update, it will say true. If otherwise, it will say false. Next method, we have get snapshot before update. So this is also optional. So this is very mainly used. This talks about when it is a state changes. So you might be wanted to get the old state. What was the change happen? So you can restore that of the old state value as well on this method. So if you use this method, you will get a previous state and previous prop. So from there, you can retrieve the old state and prop state. Then after we have component dead mount in the phase mounting. And then we have update dead mount. And last is unmounting. So this all goes simultaneously. So in the first page mounting, it also checks if that mount is happened or not. This is also checks. This is, this is also similar to this should component mount. You can see in the screen. Should component mount happens. It tells you the true and false value. If that is true, then component has mounted. Means it has changed. So you can capture, you can understand by the component did mount. This is the most used function in React component. You can add your on your API calls or any state change. So you want to change something, set state 
you can use it within this did mock. This is the place to add. And then we have component did update. So did update means if something has update or not. If that is updated, then what are the update you want to do? You put that here as well. So when we talk about mounting, or this think about your component is appearing. And when we talk about update, that means some user or there is a function who is changing some state value. And unmounting is the destroy. So this component will unmount, will happen at the end. If there is a company you want to disappear, you want to hide or you want to delete some of your the function or you want to disable some few of the function, you can use this when unmocked. We'll see in each an example. So we are going to create a simple JS script. For that, I will go to JavaScript. We will say life cycle. The first to most, I will import React. So React is will be search on road model. And if you want to search something from outside of that, then you have to write dot slash. Now I want to export default class same name of react live cycle extend react dot component started first of all we need constructor which will have props always use super if you have props then you have to place props if you don't have you can ignore Super is the keyword, then we will require a state which will initialize my value. So I will take vehicle, I will say car. This is first car. And this is get derived state from props. So this will have, you can get value from props and state. It will return. It is a function within that. I will write this. I will say last name. React component by cycle. Then I want to show my React. React value. Vehicle value. Vehicle is on set state dot. Vehicle. Then so let's uh, put that in our any of the app. So I will go to app.js. So I will add this app.js port app brown. Then I want this to be added here. I will also send my vehicle data. Let's say I have a truck. Yeah, I'm sending the vehicle as a truck. So if that truck is there. So first of all, it will get initialized by car. Okay. I will run and pin start. We'll check the code. Then it will try to start my server. Okay. It seems that there are no errors. So just after that, you will see yours is working. So you can see my React is working. So the first value what I receive is truck, okay, not the car. Because in the get derived state value, I have made it vehicle. What if I what if if I don't return it? So this will change to the initial value. Okay. So this is the one where you want to capture or store the props value. Instead of writing here like this dot uh, props dot vehicle like this, you can use here. Okay. Like this. To capture the problem, you are getting from this. So this props is the same value of that. So I'm concerning here. So that I will get it in my console. So that console will be in your browser, the device of that, not in your in here. And this also returns two things. Either it's written some 
updated state value right now I'm, I'm sending null what means nothing to get updated i'm not updating anything i'm not changing the state or any very any variable so that's why that then we have the third call is should component update so this returns true or false value which i have already told so true and false value means it will check this method is very important in terms of when you are updating some state so if any state so what are the state value we have we have vehicle and enable ft so what i am doing is i want to update that vehicle value so i have a car value i want to update to bike value okay so for that i will create a method and this method will be inside this vehicle i'm sending i'm changing the state value so when this to update up method vehicle method will get called only when i click the update so what i did is i put that in a button okay and whenever this button is clicked that will be updated understood also what i did is i have another method called to toggle update so this is a extra functionality what i have added is i'm changing the behavior of the update component so if if this returns true only then this whole component will get update functionality if that is false then that means no update will happen means you cannot change the state so no updation update happen means if you want to uh, dynamically change some value that is not going to happen so we see we'll see that in the output and also i have given the status of this so you can use this condition as well so what are the condition this is the enable update if that is true only then it will say yes otherwise it will say no please get up okay so let's see in the output i'm refreshing first time so when i refresh when component reloaded so the first method will call with the constructor right then after what method is getting called truck received so this is from this get derived state so what i'm sending from apps is truck so if that truck is there only that so now i have a token update which says yes right so what if if i want to change the update of the car value so if i click this one see what happens in the console so it also again reloaded and all the method which is called it has called one more time so now the toggle is updated so i have got the updated value what if if i disable the update so let's see that i will refresh this page when i refresh again all the method called and if i toggle to yes again on method get calls means again the render happen now my car car vehicle value is car if i try to update that i will not able to update you can see the car is still the vehicle value is still car it has not updated to bike so this means the top one update is no we cannot update so if i again click that that means it will change to yes value so you will see if one interesting fact if i click one something has happened in this console but it has not updated why because the render has not happened until you do some changes so but the method has updated the value okay at this point the toggle value is yes but it is not updated in the display for that if i click one more time see bike also change yes is also get updated hope you understood next we have render method render method will have on our div data right so we already know what is renders happening that is a fourth call it will render your div component and display that then we have get snapshot before update so for this i will add one method get snapshot before update method what it does is 
it capture information from DOM without and the second part of this is without if component div data did update function it will throw a warning so you can use to capture the previous and the previous state props and state value okay so what I have added is one condition if if ever that previous state so I have this state value which was car if that car has changed to some other value okay only then I will show that I will return that value this information is when we take up and I can use this information when we call this component did update we can show it in our console and whenever you are calling this method component did update should be there it is not mandatory but you may get warning when you are using only with this function because this works pandemic with did update because you can ignore this method that is all fine because it will all only capture previous state it is not changing anything but you can change the behavior of what value you want to send Component did update well it's used to initiate render so this is very important and you will be using this method most most probably it is also wrap the logic of condition so that you don't execute every time so this is also not every time you need to be called and this only works when you want to have some changes so I have tap sort so either if that thing that there is a value change only I will send that return value else I will send nothing and here I am capturing if the snapshot you can see the third part right parameter is snapshot this also holds previous props and previous state if snapshot is not null means I have some new changes which is uh, coming from get snapshot before update so then only I will send the information so we can see this in our output so see this when I am refreshing the first is vehicle is car if I update we can see the update as changes to bike then you can see this update update command is appear so it, it has the previous value and the new value state the next method we have so what component did mount will do is you can initiate on your API request and on your DOM manipulation you want to do you can also based on condition you can initialize that requirement okay this is very very much important all the developer all the development happens within this did mount this is on the after the mounting happens so my mounting display is there now I want to change so here this we have a method called set timer this is inbuilt method of type which will change after 10 seconds so 1000 equivalent to 1 second so 10 will be 10 second of after 10 second the vehicle value will get changed to bus see if I see the output when I start the com component the vehicle value is car if I don't do anything it will automatically get updated to that so I have not changed so this is one kind of internal event firing I have not changed this but after such certain time it has changed to bus now I have not updated the vehicle by this call so I also can do that if I click this you will see the it has changed to bike this update vehicle is only for one time what if if I refresh this and send toggle to no will this car will change to bus no it will not change to bus because right now I have made update component fall so if I set to yes so right now it will not change if I set update bike the bike will change but still that uh, bus will not get updated but you, you will see in this update method component did update the previous value was bus 
so previous state and previous props has collected the new state value internally but it has not show in the display so this is one wonderful thing when to update and what to update this is all are within the react component so it is your choice when to call the methods the last method of react life cycle is component when unmarked so this happens when you want to destroy the component so i cannot show that output within this whole component for that i have to create another component so you can see this is a one component you can also create another component out of this scope for that i will create a new component this is a new component which will have a component will mount will unmount so this performs on the cleanup of your in unnecessary thing so you to turn off component you can read that component also this by this so this if you want to try to delete that some component then this method will get fired fire not before any of the component so we have seen all the components getting fired while the updation happened before the updation happened this is when component is getting disappear so there will be one possibility when the page is going uh, like one user is going searching to other page or he is searching to uh, other within the tab so you can also send a alert message that you are changing that tab right this is very interesting will component so what i will do i will put this new component which have new component that into this existing component see this how i'm doing is i will write a, a state display okay display will give me true and false value i have not created i will i'm going to create this display will have true and false value if the display is true and i have new component new component if this is also true so here this out this is a both condition should be true only that new component will appear this is a very interesting statement you can use it when you want to show a component okay so this should also be true and this is also already true it doesn't have any condition so that's why if this is true the all everything is dependent upon this statement if this is true only then new component will be visible so this display should be in our state which will have i will say false right now okay and for that i will also create a button which will toggle my display so i will say your component so or i will say plus and minus okay to add and add the component that's it so new component have to be created here this i can use this whole thing what will happen with it should have display value which will have the toggle so just like this enable update we will we can use it before that you have to write not so that it change the behavior well then on okay so first if i refresh the vehicle values car if i change to bike it will change and for after 10 second it will change to bus and now if i click button you will see a new component and when i again click this i'm trying to toggle back and component is getting removed so it is sending a message this is inside of this method method is getting called that is component will unmount so this is getting fired it is 
showing alert message new components getting removed only okay, if you say okay there is no other option it will get removed you can play with this and there you have it a comprehensive look into the react component lifecycle methods remember mastering the react lifecycle is the key to unlocking the full potential of your application if you found value in this video consider subscribing to support our channel growth and don't forget to give it a thumbs up so that youtube can recommend to our audience before you go i highly recommend checking out our next video you can find the link in the comment section below thanks for watching this video i am atindana and you are hanging out with bit science i will see you in the next exciting video